Ashley asks, are you worried about the prospect of a Facebook or Telegram coin? No. Let me elaborate. I've been saying from very, very early days that eventually we will see corporate coins, like Facebook coin or Telegram coin. We're also going to see um, digital currencies that are pegged or stable coins that are developed by large banks. J.P. Morgan Chase coin, and we're also going to eventually see central bank digital currencies such as a Fed coin or Digi Dollar or something like that. And it could be any central bank in the world that does this. All of these have one thing in common: they are fiat. They are fundamentally centralized, censorable, bordered, controlled, vetted, closed uh, systems. Uh, that have all of the same characteristics of fiat. They're simply digital. And guess what? We already have digital fiat. All banks operate primarily with digital fiat. Ninety-two percent of the money supply in the world is digital fiat that has no physical equivalent in cash. The only difference here is the implementation. Instead of being implemented as a SQL database, it's implemented as a blockchain database. Um, both are centralized, controlled by a central operator. Nothing changed here at all. Facebook will still not be able to transmit Facecoin across borders without complying with all of the banking regulations. Facebook will not be able to offer a coin that does not have strict KYC AML any more than PayPal can. Facebook will not be able to produce a coin that is censorship resistant, open, decentralized, neutral, borderless, uh, or in any way similar to any cryptocurrency. They will recreate the world of digital dollars, PayPal, Venmo, etc. Sure, they will be massively successful. And they will compete not against cryptocurrencies. They will compete against banks. And the reason they compete against banks is because the product they're offering does not differentiate from digital fiat that banks offer. So they can offer better user experience, uh, better speed, better customer service, perhaps more brand recognition, better access for their digital fiat than Visa and JP Morgan Chase, PayPal and Venmo. They should be very scared because they're going to get competition from Silicon Valley. None of this competes against crypto. And the reason it doesn't compete against crypto because crypto's differentiator is freedom open, decentralized, neutral, borderless, censorship-resistant money for the entire world without discrimination, identification, uh, censorship, and controls. None of those features can be offered by any of these coins. So if you believe that those features are needed in the world, and I can tell you they are, perhaps not by your average North American or Western European. They already have PayPal and Venmo and all of those things. Adding face coin isn't going to change anything to that. They are needed by people who live under currency controls and failing fiat systems, authoritarian governments, controlled, centralized institutions, corrupt democracies, kleptocratic mafiosi banks, and all of these things. And guess what? That's 90% of the human population live under those conditions. And for them, Facecoin isn't a solution. It is simply another form of broken central currency. The open system is a solution to a very specific problem. And the problem is caused by centralization of control. And that problem cannot be solved by Facecoin and will never be solved by Facecoin. Facecoin will deplatform users. It will censor transactions. It will have to slow things down. It will require you to document who you're paying and why, for what reason, where you got it, why you got it. And if they don't like the answer, they don't like who paid you, they don't like who you paid. Guess what? Your account will be frozen, just like PayPal does today. Nothing changes. In fact, Facebook is probably going to be more aggressive in freezing your account. It's going to be more aggressive in applying surveillance to all of your transactions and selling that surveillance to hundreds and hundreds of different intelligence agencies, corporate and commercial surveillance companies, totalitarian regimes, and things like that. Facebook will sell the financial transactions of dissidents to the dictators that are hunting them down and get people killed, because that's how 
fiat works. JP Morgan coin. This question comes from Jamie. Does it really come from Jamie though? Um, maybe. Maybe that's just a pseudonym. JP Morgan coin. Just curious what your thoughts are on whether bank coins will become more mainstream and if so, what impacts will that have on other coins? Uh, yes, bank coins will become more mainstream. Bank coins will have more market capitalization. Bank coins will have more users. And bank coins will deliver less freedom, less decentralization, less neutrality, less censorship resistance, less borderless operation, less of everything that matters, competing primarily with fiat and other bank coins, and not really offering any competition to coins whose primary differentiation is freedom, decentralization, open, borderless, neutral, um, censorship resistant access for the world, something that bank coins cannot offer, will never offer, and as a result cannot compete with. Does that mean that they are going to be bigger? Absolutely. Richer? Absolutely. Well, guess what? Fiat is already bigger and richer than crypto. That doesn't matter. The measure of success here is not market cap. The measure of success is not how fast you can shed principles of liberty or give in and compromise to absurd regulations that impoverish people both financially and in terms of their freedom and make them subject to surveillance capitalism and the rapacious corruption of dictators around the world. That is not the measure of success. The measure of success is how much freedom can you give to as many people as possible around the world to be able to exercise their human rights of free trade, commerce, open uh, access to um, the possibility of a better future, freedom of speech, freedom of association, and all of the other important freedoms through a system of money that does not discriminate, is not controlled by a few, is not manipulated to enrich an upper class, and all of those other things that we have in fiat. Will bank coins keep coming? Sure they will. No matter what, if you start compromising your principles, you will discover that there are very big, well-funded organizations in the world that have made as their business plan the ability to compromise their principles faster than anybody else. And so that's a race to the bottom. What we should be doing is strengthening the principles within crypto, introducing better privacy, better anonymity, um, within these crypto systems, better fungibility, um, and also working on improving the technology in terms of security, usability, uh, and all of the other wonderful things that are already happening in the crypto space. JP Morgan coin, they can have it, enjoy, have fun with that. I expect that experiments like this, especially in the beginning, will fail miserably, because fundamentally they misunderstand the differentiator and value of cryptocurrencies. Fundamentally, they misunderstand the value of blockchains. Fundamentally, what they are doing is business as usual, wrapped in a disguise of innovation, uh, which, which really doesn't contain any change in the fundamental uh, power balance, which is what crypto is all about. Ecoin, yes, <laughs> evil corp. It's really funny how uh, JP Morgan Chase is quite explicitly following the plot of Mr. Robot um, and doing the exact plot line of season two, uh, even though we know exactly how it ends with most of their offices in flames. <laughs>